blackout. Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at some benchmarks I ran during the blackout beta. I was originally planning on not benchmarking this game as I'm not a big fan of the Call of Duty series, but this game was better than I expected. We start with some bad news. The game does not run on AMD Phenom 2 CPUs. I kept getting a fatal error and a quick search online revealed that I was not the only one with this problem. Apparently it is because the Phenom 2s lack support for SSE 4.1 instruction set. They might fix this when the full game is released as this had been a problem with the previous Call of Duty game too. Second bad news, my C170 motherboard died so I won't have any Intel numbers. To make up for that I have included numbers for a laptop I have with a GTX 1050 and a desktop Intel CPU. So let's take a look at the system specs. First up is the GTX 1070 which was paired with the AMD Ryzen R5 1600 at 3.7GHz and AMD FX8350 at 4.5GHz. Second is the R9 290 paired with the same CPUs. Lastly we have the laptop which I will call the Love Budget Gamer which is a GTX 1050 paired with a Pentium G4620 and and an i5-6600K. I use the latest NVIDIA 399.24 drivers and AMD 18.9.1 drivers. Only the NVIDIA drivers mention support for the beta. Before we look at the numbers, I must mention that the beta is kept at 90 frames per second and I benchmarked running down a hill facing the fracking station. I'll try to mark it on the map. I ran 6 benchmark runs, discarding the best and worst run for each configuration and averaging out the 4 remaining runs. The GTX 1070 was tested with all graphing settings maxed out at 130% render scaling. Here we can see that the FX8350 is not capable of keeping up with the new Ryzen CPU. I ran this test several times because the difference was much greater than I was expecting. The FX8350 is 31% slower than the R5-1600 on the average frame rate and 42 and 48% slower for the 1% and 0.1% low figures. The gameplay was noticeably more choppy on the FX8350 as you can imagine. So how does the FX8350 fare with a less powerful graphics card like the R9-290? The R9-290 was tested with the most settings on high at 100% render scaling and here we can see that there is still a performance gap to the R5-1600 though not as big as with the 1070. The FX8350 is 14% uh, slower for the average frame rate, 20% slower for the 1% low and 95% slower for the 0.1% low. It is possible that the performance on the FX8350 will be better on the released game, but uh, personally I doubt it. Next we will take a look at the budget gaming system. This was tested with a GTX 1050 at a mixture of medium and low settings at 100% render scaling. Changing from the Pentium to the i5-6600K here did not only marginally lift performance. The i5-6600K was 4% faster on average than the Pentium G4620, the 1% and 0.1% low is really only margin of error stuff. Overclocking the GTX 1050 raised the average frame rate 5% on the i5-6600K from 42.8 frames per second to 45 frames per second. I was not able to get 60 frames per second with 100% render scaling. A desktop GTX 1050 may fare a bit better. Keep in mind that this was a beta version of the game and the performance may improve once the game is released. That's it for now, thanks for watching and remember don't call tech support.